Oh, well, hello there. <laughs> hello, everyone. Welcome to Innovation Coffee brought to you by ARM. My name is Robert Holtz, Robert Wolf, your host this week and every week, every Thursday, 5 p.m. UTC. Um, as you could tell, I'm a little bit out of practice today. Uh, we have had quite a few cancellations due to ARM Dev Summit, and last week um, I was unable to make it. So <clears throat> bear with me here. Today, we have an exciting episode for you. We are joined by folks from SparkFun and Dialog. Uh, in fact, Kirk Bennell, Chief Technology Officer from SparkFun Electronics, and Ken Wu, Product Marketing from Dialog. We will be talking about a really cool new device that they have, actually a couple cool new devices. We have some demos in store for you, and uh, we're gonna get to learn a couple uh, new things and cool things about Wi-Fi. Everything, all you have to know about Wi-Fi. In fact, that's uh, that's uh, what the title of this episode is. So thank you everyone for joining us. I wanna remind you that if you are really enjoying this episode, make sure you smash that like button here on the video here on YouTube. And don't forget to follow us on ARM Software Developers at any point any point during the episode, interrupt us, post your questions. <laughs> yeah, Ali, Robert Host, yeah. Um, at any point, post your questions here in the chat and we will get to them as soon as possible, whether it's a question for me or a question for one of our featured guests, we will make sure that those questions get answered. Now, I think without further ado, let's bring in our guests. We have Kirk Bunnell and Ken Wu. Here they are joining us. Um, welcome, Kirk. Welcome, Ken, to the show. Um, I'm very excited to hear. Hello, hello. Hi. So hi. I brought coffee. Was that right? Yes. So, so as as a, as a true to form here, we all can kind of cheers. Cheers. Oh, jeez. Okay. Sometimes I say a little uh, cringy thing at the beginning. I say, welcome to Innovation Coffee, where the coffee is hot, but the innovation is hotter. <laughs> I, I think you're setting us up a little high here. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just Wi-Fi. No. It's just Wi-Fi. It's just Wi-Fi. We, we take Wi-Fi so much for granted until one day you don't have it. The electricity goes out and you're like, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do without Wi-Fi today? Right. So, Kirk. Kirk, Ken, let's talk about you, right? We want to kind of set up a little bit here, talk about the um, origin stories, both of your guys' origin stories. So I think first let's start with Kirk. I want to hear a little bit about you. What, what have you done in the past? What are you doing now? What led you to become Chief Technology Officer at SparkFun? And maybe if you have a fun anecdote to share about yourself as well, that'd be nice. Oh, too. gosh. You know, um, you know, I started doing electronics in the 80s. Yeah, I'm that guy. Um, on a submarine doing navigational uh, electronics. I think a fun story there is I kind of broke the navigation system once. <laughs> uh, but it's all good. They let me go. It's all good. Um, but after that, I worked in, um, you know, mostly software doing uh, scientific computing, um, defense intelligence, um, anywhere from like the Galileo spacecraft, medical imaging, uh, to some very interesting things uh, with hyperspectral sensors and exploitation. Um, and did all that, and then uh, did the big career in corporate, and left that in the, like 2013, 14. I was playing around IoT stuff, electronics, and a job opened to Spark Fund, which is just down the road. I'm like, I'll, I'll apply. And I uh, got there. Um, they gave me some red boards, and been there about four and a half years, four years, um, and it's been great. Uh, and gosh, you know. Get a get a work with a great team, a great company. And Nate, if you don't Nate, the founder, he's fantastic. And I just get to grab these boards every day and bring them home and play with them. So, gosh, how fun is that? That's uh, awesome. Yeah, actually, you know, it's it's it's. I'm I'm curious. Did you break the navigation of the submarine when it was above water or below water? Oh, it's below water. We were never. <laughs> it really was below water. Above water. Um, people can see you when you're above water. <laughs> I, I took some stuff down and uh, all all good. Uh, <laughs> wrong switch. Oh, all the amazing. missiles didn't launch. It was all fine. Um, we're safe. And so, when you talk about being, uh, you know, finding a, a job wreck for for Spark Fun, I mean, your CTO. Did you start off? Was the job wreck for CTO, or did you work your way up to that position? It, it was CTO. I, I had been a CTO at a previous company for about twenty years, um, and grew there. And uh, I, I went to Spark Fun. And, uh, you know, I'm the CT CTO overseeing all technology things, which is, you know, things like this, but also I oversee like the help desk. We're a small company. Um, so if you have a PC problem, you can come to me and I can help get, get it fixed too. So uh, 
it's it's awesome to see someone in in the the chief positions actually getting their hands dirty you know putting their putting some work into the technology itself i think that's really cool so you know you say you have all of this hardware on your desk you know I, you know when you get to some companies the cto they they're so bogged down with meetings and i'm sure you are as well but they don't get a chance to get their hands dirty as much so this is this is really cool this is a a different take i love this yeah, it's important. You know, the stuff we do, and we do a lot of different things. It's, a, it's important to know what you're talking about, how it works, what doesn't. Um, otherwise, you know, you're going to look bad. You know, we got some really important <laughs> work on, and they're going to tell you what's, what's what. Um, yeah. So I, I try to keep up with them mostly. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, we get to play with everything. You know, it's great. We have all these toy toys. We have these very serious electronic uh, elements. <laughs> um, uh, and we get to experiment and, you know, you know, we continually put out new products, new exciting things, um, new takes on old technology like this, this Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi board we're talking about. I mean, I mean, my first Wi-Fi system was, you know, 20 years ago. Wow. Um, but this, this thing, we'll, I know we'll talk about it. It's, it's fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for everyone watching, we have an entire segment this hour dedicated to the Wi-Fi module that he's showing right now. So that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kirk, for sharing your story. Appreciate it. So, Ken, you're up next. Origins, where where, where are you coming from? Hi, everyone. So so I, I started my career at uh, a startup company in Sydney, Australia. Uh, I think that was 2000 when we were um, developing the uh, AL 2.11a uh, baseband and RF chip. So my first gig was a, a, a chip verification engineer. So I basically write in very low code, write in test bench to verify the, uh, the the digital portion of the baseband chip. And then, and then after four years there, I, I moved back to Taiwan and then joined uh, Marvel Semiconductor. And, and, and then that was when I started kind of moving into kind of uh, marketing role as a as a technical marketing engineer and like, like promoting embedded Wi-Fi solution to customer. And then then spent about 17 years at Marvel, moving to US uh, and was later on doing some program management and, and, and business dev in, in Wi-Fi technology. And and then, yeah, and then now kind of moving to my current role at uh, Dialog. Uh, this, this is my fourth week here. And and yeah, I was, I was Motor, I mean, I was fascinated by the, the, the dialogue solution, especially in the ultra low power, which is something I, I think it, it bring a, a value proposition to to the low power application. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's pretty much uh yeah my past twenty years career uh, uh, experience. Yeah, if I use this quote a lot, but you know, if yeah. I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Here we have two giants that have been working in the Wi-Fi industry for 20 years. I mean, come on, I'm a 36 year old. You guys have been doing this for much longer than me. And so, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there um, who, if anything, have benefited from the work that you two have put into this industry. So um, I think that that's really cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Excellent, excellent. All right, so we, we like to do a little icebreaker around here. I know we got to know you now, welcome, welcome. Um, we like to do something called Innovation Coffee Crib. So let's roll that. We're going to get to see what's on your desks today. And I think this is very exciting because um, you look like you have a lot of cool stuff on your desk. And then we'll be surprised to see what Ken has on his desk because it was kind of hidden. Yeah. So let's let's actually start with you, Kirk. What, what kind of cool stuff do you have on your desk? Show, show uh, some cool things. I, got, I got, you know, bins of just random spark fun stuff. Uh, you know, I need a quick cable and we're out of my spark fun. I probably have it in my house. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I'm working on um, taking this surface dial and making it a remote control for my stereo, like an, you know, some IR thing. Uh, various, I, I probably have like 25 different versions of Raspberry Pi and the little small computers laying around because I, I have one that I lose it and I can't find it. Um, so, and if we're out of stock at the office, I'm sorry, I probably have all of my <laughs> I was gonna say that's probably why it's not at the office. <laughs> yeah, just a bunch of tools because you never know when you might need to do something um, when you're at your desk. Uh, and you know that's it. Nothing super crazy. Um, yeah. 
Fun stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, a nice, nice computer system. Cause you know, you gotta have a nice computer. System. You gotta have a nice computer system. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. And I know we're going to, we, I, I don't want to spoil it. Right. And I'm glad you haven't spoiled it so much yet. I don't want you to be showing that Wi-Fi module just yet. Cause we got a cool stuff. We got some cool stuff to talk about in a bit about that. Um, but very cool. Thank you for, sh thank you for sharing. And now Ken, you're up. Let's see, let's see any surprises you have there. Well, um, I, I tend to keep my desk clean because I have four cats at home. <laughs> I definitely don't want to bite in anything, but, but I do have a kind of setup, which I was hoping to show uh, oh, yeah. today. But anyway, uh, uh, yeah, so it's kind of, yeah. So that's what I have on my desk today. And then a bunch of cables around. Oh, and then there's a two thing on the back. <laughs> <laughs> well, can we see that? Can we see that setup? Or is that something you're going to be showing when we, when we look at the demo? Uh, yeah, that will be showing when you look at a demo. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Well, thank you so much. That was uh, this installment of Innovation Coffee Cribs. Great. So it's time now to dive into our main segment. And our main segment is talking about the SparkFun Quick Wi-Fi Shield. And usually let's, let's kind of like cover some high levels here, right? Like when you talk about shields, you're usually addressing the Arduino market. When right. you talk about hats, you're usually talking about the Raspberry Pi market. And if you're talking about mezzanines, you're usually addressing the 96 boards market. At least those are the three kind of that I'm familiar with right off the top of my head. So shields, this is a, this is a, a, uh, an add on, uh, add on piece of hardware for the Arduino ecosystem, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we developed. Can I show it now? Yeah, you can show it. Yeah, let's let's see it. I, I don't and, and, also, and, and also, and also, I think like while we're at it, let's let's talk about kind of like the birth of this device, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure it took a lot of work to create something like this. So maybe how did how did it come to be as well? You, you know, that's a really good question. You know, we we have a really good working relationship with ARM, um, and, and we we uh, worked with you over the years, and we were approached um by by gentleman at arm and said you know you, how about working together with some of our partners to do a, some breakout boards um and we got connected with dialogue about the, this wi-fi module so this module here yep. mm -hmm. uh, i can drive this thing um and you know could we create a, a board an add-on board a shield which is the shield here um boy left is right and right is left right yep. um and uh um can we put that together and i think this was um, and, and oh, by the way, we want to do that, and we want to have it for the uh, ARM Dev Summit um, in like you know ten weeks. Can you do that? It was like, well, absolutely, we can. So the Spark, one of the things Spark can do, we can. We're all want to do everything. You know, we design, we manufacture, uh, we source, um, and we're we're very good at that. And we can do it quickly if motivated. Um, and, a, and a trade show, a show, is always a good motivation. Um, so, so we collaborated with uh, Dialog. They gave us some modules to, to do the work. Um, got access to some of their engineers. You know, Arm helped facilitate that, um, and we started developing the board. Did the design. You know, we've done shields um, over the years, um, but this had some really unique thing capabilities, and we got input from Dialog. And then, you know, our normal process: build them, design, design reviews, and do a prototype. So we do prototype boards. And we sent those uh, really around the world. I think it was Korea and maybe somewhere in Europe um, to actually validate our design. So we did design reviews with our partner, Dialog. Uh, we sent them hardware. They gave it a try. Um, you know, getting emails at weird times. Not weird for everybody else, but probably for us, three in the morning type stuff. Working globally um, to make sure we had right, right design and right capabilities. Um, and, you know, we added an extra, 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 extra headers on the board as part of that process nice. to expose more functionality because this is a quite a capable module. Um, and went through that, um, finalized the design, got all the parts in house um, and you know built the boards and, and posted them, I believe about a month ago, up for sale on SparkFun. And in addition to that, we actually had these boards as part of a, a class or session at the Dev Summit, Developer Summit, and so we, you know, SparkFun, we're also very good at making kits. So we put them in a kit um, and ship those out to our partners also. Um, it was a great experience. Um, you know, we, we love working with people like this because, you know, it helps us learn more about the technology involved, uh, what we can do with it, what we can't. Um, also helps the, the partner because we can help troubleshoot anything, identify issues. Um, and, and as I mentioned, we can do this pretty quickly. So if something comes up during the design process, we can really iterate on it 
and get you know the updated PCBs or layouts uh, and put together. And you know we got this thing out in the market. We uh, got to the, the dev show. Um, I think it was very successful. Um, and we're still you know we, we still got a few up left on on the our store. So if you want to buy one, sparkfun.com. I think there's a link later on. Um, and uh, you know we, we did this one board. And we have another board I'll show you in a little bit. And then we have another board uh, we want to collaborate with Dialogue on in 2022. Nice. Uh, so it's not just a one hit wonder. You know, we want to really work closely because each, you have know, different customer segments who want different types of uh, footprints. Um, but also, it's important we bring it into the, you know, we have these different ecosystems. So we have Quick, our little Quick system, which is an I squared C standardization uh, cable and, you know, plug, a JST plug. Uh, obviously, Shields, I'll show you some of our new ecosystems in a minute, um, because by doing that, you you know, you sure you have a Wi-Fi board, but now you can connect it to an ecosystem like 200 other boards. You know, it's all yeah. plug and play. Um, you know, we want to focus on customer success. So, you know, get a board, plug it together and have run a demo mm -hmm. uh, often in Arduino um, within like five, 10 minutes. And then, you know, as an engineer, you're like, oh, this is great. Let me do more. And you get that cycle, like build, edit, compile, deploy, get mad, try again, um, debug. Uh, and then all of a sudden it's midnight, you, you know, <laughs> right? Uh, when, you, when you have lights like I do in my garage here, um, it's, uh, you know, you don't even know what time of day it is. Yeah, it's dangerous, man. Yeah, uh, it's really dangerous. It's good though. Um, yeah. So, you know, it was a great experience for Earthworth Dialogue and ARM. Um, you know, we want to do more. Um, but it was just, it, it's fun for the team. It's part fun to, you know, work on these new technologies, but also with the engineers in different locations um, and get insight on what to do, um, you know, and have some good discussions and figure out what, what we can do in the market. And, you know, I think that was very successful with this product um, over here. So <clears throat> I have a question for you here. You know, you, you brought up a really good point, I think, at least in my opinion. And we've talked to, about this on the show several times this last year, but the path to product, right? The path to product, not only for, let's say, bigger companies, partner companies, but also, you know, just that average engineer that's sitting in their garage working on some cool idea. And, you know, I think it's I think it's important. I'd like to hear more. Does SparkFun offer this kind of path to product? Because I know like if I wanted to buy that Wi-Fi module, get my Arduino, plug it in and build out some cool project or product, right. eventually you get to a point where it's not worth it to buy these parts anymore. I might need a derivative design or something right. like that. Does SparkFun help with derivative designs and pumping out, you know, like larger quantities of, of boards if needed? You know, that's a really good question. And we do, you know, we started um, really there's two tacks on that, you know. We have a services group we've started standing up um, and you can work with them. And, you know, we bring the expertise from, you know, building, you know, not easy to use uh, boards and software to actually then the manufacturing process. We, we have partners to do this. They come to us, you know, supply chain. If anybody's electronics knows supply chain is madness. Oh uh, my goodness. You know, yes. Yeah. Especially this last couple of years. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, um, so we can help manage that. We have a great supply chain team that knows, can find that, you know, you need something, they'll find it who knows where. Um, you know, sometimes it costs a little much, but, you know, these days, but they'll find it. But we can help help that with sourcing, help with production, um, you know, and we're all in one building. So the engineers, the design people, the marketing people, the services people can go down and talk to the production folks, the manufacturing folks. Um, and fulfillment too. So it's not only just building the boards, but it's actually shipping them out. And yeah. We get that all um, in one building, and we have a great team. Um, and it's 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 really unique and convenient for us. Yeah, I think that's I think that's nice. That's a, that's a nice touch, and and I think that's also why we have been very keen to collaborate with Spark Fund for the Arm Dev Summit stuff, like two years in a row now, or three right. years in a row. We did. Right. This year, last year, and we collaborated, I think, for the AIoT Dev Summit right. at the Computer History Museum as well. So people get their Spark Fun kits. You know, Allie, who joined us during Arm TV at Dev Summit, she was she was tapping into all of the cool uh, Spark Fun sponsored workshops, and that was that was really nice. 
Um, so yeah, I think people really enjoyed those. In fact, we're getting comments in the chat right now, you know, about how <laughs> spark fun is on Mars and David yes. Tischler has spark fun parts on his desk right now. So there's a, there's a, a, a lot of people out there who definitely uh, love the work that spark fun does. It, it's shocking to see, you know, you want, I don't know, whatever it's on a TV show when somebody did something and like, there's a little red board in the corner over there. Like, oh, it's a spark fun thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when it's red, right. That, that, it, some companies have their, their touch right there. But yeah, definitely the red boards are spark fun. I have a stack of of um, of spark fun kits that uh, I like to give out to engineers and oh, developers nice. in the ecosystem. So it's very nice. All right. So now I want to talk about the what is it? The 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 peas and carrots, the the meat of the of the board, right? <laughs> That's all right. But anyways, um, uh, what? Let's break down this board. What's the hardware breakdown? Let's talk about all the little components that ha that come into play there. Because you touched on the Wi-Fi module and right. some of these additional ports that you've added, or you know, pinouts that you've added. Let's break it down. I gotta put my glasses. On. All right, all right. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> well, we're gonna zoom your screen in so you can like hold it up to the camera and stuff. Okay. Here we go. Um, so, so you know, this really interesting. This is a you know. Uh, uh, our module, dialog arm module with Wi-Fi, and on its own, it's it's it can be a, a microprocessor and capability, you know, do capabilities on its own. And there's a whole software stack the dialog provides that, you know, we'll do some work on that a little bit later in 2022. Um, but this module, it, you know, runs in kind of an AT command mode, um, so you know, you're sending commands to it um, through UART um, from a microprocessor, which I have. I know I'm going to screw this up. But this is one of our Arduino boards, our, um, Artemis boards, red board, which I have up. I'm going to get in trouble having it upside down. Um, and, uh, you know, it runs an Apollo 3 uh, BLE system, um, really low power ARM, ARM Cortex, uh, I think it's an M4. And, you know, so that talks to the shield, through center shield, through a UART to send AT commands. So anybody who's done anything with like a communication uh, system over the years, like, past 40 years probably, uh, you can send these AT commands. And Dialog is, has firmware on this module and this is deployment that accepts uh, AT commands to you know connect to Wi-Fi, reset set the parameters on the chip for the Wi-Fi connection, and you know send off commands to connect to internet uh, locations, you know, get something from a website. You know, we have a demo to talk to a time server and it's all built in, and it's just sending basically string commands across a UART, um, and then getting the information back. Now we've also added some additional pins and capabilities. Uh, I better put this together. Um, a, to, you know, one of the key factors on this module is it's incredibly low power. I mean, it can really you put it to sleep, and I think there's a. I don't think I know we have the demo today, but you know, you can put it to sleep, and and it can be on like a couple double A batteries for a year. And yeah. Every 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 so often to unlock a door or something on Wi-Fi, that's eh, incredible. I mean, that's really true innovation because, um, you know, the history with Wi-Fi has always been it's just a battery sucker. It just kills your load on your battery, and this solves that, and that's what we want to demo. And so there's pins on here that allow you to put the module to sleep. You can put Artemis to sleep, or you can put another board to sleep and really save your power, and then, you know, the standard cycle, sleep, wake up, Maybe something happened. If not, go back to sleep. If you did, wake up the Wi-Fi module and send out a message or send, send out some something that you need to tell somebody. Um, and you know, we've added some quick connector on this, so you can talk to it through quick. Um, and you know, different other headers, which I don't, I can't read right now. Um, I want to, I want to, I want to actually talk real quick about this whole power saving thing because it's huge, right? Like, I mean. Think about this. Like I just turned my home into a smart home right now. I went the consumer route where I just kind of bought these smart devices off the market, mm -hmm. the Lutron, whatever set of stuff. And, um, you know, my house is kind of small. Like it's, it's actually a thousand square feet, not very big, but I have literally like 20 switches. Now these switches are of course plugged into power and everything, but as the world becomes more connected and we have, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds, millions of devices out there. You can't just send a person out there to change the batteries every so often. Like these batteries need to last long enough to where if anything, the device becomes obsolete. And so now it just becomes replacing the device or if anything like that. So these batteries need to last a long time. So I think it's, I think it, that's, that's really cool that, you know, 
Absolutely. You, you can really see use modules with this kind of technology where you ship a product with a battery in it and you see this with a small coin cells. You pull a little pin and then the power comes on. Um, but you ship a Wi-Fi system with a situation like that and you, you pull the piece of plastic and it becomes online and maybe it's already registered with your Wi-Fi system and that's it. And then my mom can use it, right? There's no registration. You know, there's the mom test. Can Kurt's mom? <laughs> that is ultimate test. Put so it there, somewhere and then that's it for a couple, three years. So there's a question that popped up in here by Hybonics. And um, he's asking if that Wi-Fi module can do SPI. I know you said, I think you mentioned it communicates through UART. UART. Um, so can it do SPI? Do you know if the module can, but maybe that just wasn't broken out? The module can. I don't believe it's broken out. I think there's some I2C connection. Um, but as we move forward with the module to do some other stuff, uh, different formats, um, it, it'll be a full, fully capa capable yeah. system. Very nice. Did you want to add to that, Ken? It seems like maybe you want yeah, to add Yeah, so, so uh, essentially the, the, the module has a, a bunch of GPL, uh, which can be repurposed to uh, SPI as well. So yeah, so the hardware is there, uh, and, and we will just SPI. Yeah. can go through the SPI interface as well. So then to answer your next question, or at least to comment on your next mm -hmm. comment there, Hybonics, I would like to find a Wi-Fi module that can speak SPI. It seems like this module can. So there you go. You yeah. found a module that can do it. Maybe you can get one of these boards, head on over to SparkFun, buy a board and hack it up so that it uh, <laughs> so that it speaks SPI. And, yeah, and also, and I shouldn't say this because I'm going to get in trouble with some product people, but also stay tuned in like Q1, Q2, and we'll have some. Oh, there you go. Q1, Q2. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. So um, that was a nice breakdown. I think that was really cool. And you can, of course, head on over to the SparkFun website. Uh, check out this module. There's a whole list of specifications there. Um, I Did I pull it up here? I think I have it pulled up right here. Yeah. So in fact, let me just share my screen here real quick so we can look at it. There you go. This is the SparkFun nice. Quick Wi-Fi Shield there. So you, it's right under SparkFun Product 18567. And uh, we also posted that link right down there. So you can go check it out. But uh, yeah, pretty nice. Only 20 bucks. Um, I guess this also might depend on where your where your region is or where you're located to, to get it to you. But um, that's a that's a very good price for something that for what you're getting here. Um, so check it out. And then, of course, like I said, you can go check out the features, all the different bits and pieces that, that we talked about. It looks like there's some documentation. Um, SparkFun is always really good about documenting their products. So very well done there. Let's unshare this now. So. I think it's time for a little demo. Yeah. Ken, what do you think? Yeah. You're, you're up first. So, so, so we have a, a pre-recorded demo. So I'm just going to show you. So essentially, the demo will, will showcase this board. So you, you see the shield uh, module here, and then the Wi-Fi module. So, so the demo is all about uh, using the uh, Wi-Fi connection to showcase the AWS uh, IoT dot lock uh, demo. And, and as we all know. Uh, this day, you see a lot of door, door lock as a wireless uh, uh, connectivity, I, I think. And, and most of, and all of them kind of pretty much runs on battery. So ultra low power is very, very important. So, so Robert, uh, please uh, go ahead, uh, play this clip. Real, so, yeah, go ahead. Real quick, before we, yeah. before we play the clip, this mm -hmm. was at the IoT World AWS Summit? When was uh, this? It was, when, when it was, was the, uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, there was the IoT, AI IoT World at Silicon Valley. Uh, so, so that's uh, that's where we kind of showcase this demo uh, at our stand, and yeah. And I, was... I have to, I have to say, it's amazing. It's wonderful to see live events coming back. Yeah. So, so I'm I haven't seen this video yet. I'm excited to see what it's like. You yeah. know, only a few weeks ago this was recorded. Yeah. Let's 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 run that yeah. that demo. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is our new SparkFun Arduino Shield board, uh, developed by SparkFun. This is our module 16200 mounted on that. So what I'm going to demonstrate is uh, our door lock application running KT commands. KT commands is a standard uh, interface we are providing and it's easy to develop. You can develop in any application in an hour. So if you see it here, we have the MCU which is the Renesas RA2L1 and uh, the shield board is attached to that. And uh, here is our mobile phone screen, I, I put it here. And this block. So what I'm going to do is I can run a door lock application here. Uh, right now it's uh, open and it's closed so I'm going to click here. It's going to send some commands over the cloud and then say that it's you see the LED here is now green it's been open. I can close the door by pressing here 
which is actually sending commands back to the cloud and then coming here and then you can see it actually the door is locked now it's green i can also do the same for a window uh, when i click the window it's actually sending the commands you see it's become red now it's open you can see the blue led is on i can also close it from here like you know it will send another command to close it so it's all developed and it's uh, the whole stack is running uh, using the AT commands and you can also develop the similar application anything over the AWS IoT cloud within an hour. Thank you. Yeah, so that was my colleague, uh, uh, Chandra. He's a FAE uh, that's supporting uh, US uh, customers. Yeah, so yeah, so what essentially what, what we are showing there is is the exactly the application that, that this module can do uh, for low power requirement and and yeah, all the sample app and and SDK is available from Dialog website as well for Dialog. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, Kirk, did you want to comment on that? I'm sorry. No, I just it is amazing just what they're doing here. Um, great, great demo. You know, it's always good to see a demo showing something that works. We can talk about it all day, and I can show you. You know, here's something that works. Um, good stuff. Very nice. And, yeah, I mean, I. And it's really nice to see a trade show again, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. I mean, so these kind of things really make me question my own personal decisions as a mm -hmm. consumer, right? Because I am a yeah. developer at heart. I mean, I'm a studied electrical engineer, though lately, you know, I can't, haven't had found, haven't been able to find the time to do this kind of own hands on work. But mm -hmm. like, you know, like I said, I just kind of equipped my entire house with this smart system. And then you see, these really cool devices out there that as a developer, I could kind of detach myself from these conglomerates and build myself a smart home on my own. Why do I make these decisions sometimes when um, I could, you know, take something like this Wi-Fi module and build out my own smart home as is, right? So um, very cool. I'm excited to see, uh, I'll, actually after this show, I'm probably gonna go search the internet and see what kind of projects people have been building. I'm sure they're already doing cool stuff with this. Yeah, totally. Um, Excellent. So, um, so Ken, thank you so much for showing us that demo. You're welcome. Do you want to give credit to anyone who built that? Do, should we give credit to someone? Well, Spark Fun for Spark Fun. support. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excellent. Excellent. Thank awesome. you. All right. So, Kirk, uh, you have a demo as well, right? Something you wanted to show? I have a simple demo, and it's really just going to show some software we're doing. And I got to get my screens here. Um, okay. And. Uh, I, it's some software that I don't think many people at Spark would know that we've done. Nate does. So Nate, our founder, um, came to me with a problem. And we wrote some software. And I'm going to show it working with the module. And I'm going to try to uh, share my screen. It's a live demo, so it's not going to work properly, right? Um, did, we, did we sacrifice anything to the demo gods this morning? Because, I don't know, maybe someone in the chat did for us. Uh, I, I, I don't know. The computer gods could be angry. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, let, there, we see your screen popping up. Let us know when you're ready for us to pull it up. I am. Uh, I'm ready. Okay, we got it. Ra Rachel, our executive producer, the wizard behind the scenes. All right, there we go. Cool. Organization okay, coffee demo. Oh yeah, I put a slide together. I love I'm it. About the powerpoints because that is part of my job. Um, really, it's going to be talking about the board that I showed you. So it's a red board Artemis with a Bluetooth module. So it's got Bluetooth capability. We connected an environmental sensor to it using our quick um, system, which is just off to a BME 280. Um, I couldn't show a stack of shields. So we got the, di the dialogue shield, the Wi-Fi shield. Um, it's going to connect to the internet and just get time. So that the goal here was I'm collecting data. I need accurate time. And I was hoping to get it so I could post it up to uh, um, an internet site, but ran out of time yesterday. So we'll just use our imagination. Um, and then the software we're going to show is we have a, a system that's based on Bluetooth to show like properties or settings, dynamically create a settings application and it runs on uh, Google Chrome um, for Bluetooth. So basically you can take your Arduino system, um, our, our Bluetooth Arduino system, set some values in your board, your code, and this system will automatically display settings. And just wanted to show how that works and put this all together because at SparkFun, we're all about putting ecosystems together and showing how everything works together. Um, and that sounds good. Let's see if it works. So I have, I'll plug my board in. I have a little terminal. So there we go, the board's up. And let's see if it works. So the, the board's on the left, stage right, maybe. Um, the board started up, it's, it's talking through Bluetooth. 
And then on the right, I have a, uh, it's just a web page running, you know, a bunch of JavaScript um, on a local file and I'll say, I'm gonna connect to it. And so they've had a Bluetooth co connectivity to Chrome so I can actually pair with this board. And it's gonna go off and say, I'm gonna create some properties that the board is advertising. Those are just characteristics. Um, and here's where we get the fun. You can say, you know, you have an embedded system. I gotta go hard code my Wi-Fi system into it or something else. Uh, but what we want is to actually dynamically create it. So I set up a little, um, uh, what do I call it? Uh, uh, Wi-Fi network here. Two, and I think that's it. And then hit enable. And so you can see on the left, I've sent the commands to the module to connect. It's connecting to the Wi-Fi system. Um, here, I think I got everything right. Is it going to work? Oh, I hope it, if it doesn't work, then the demo's off. Um, <laughs> we got it. We got it. It's going to happen. <laughs> it didn't work. Oh, it's okay. Uh, it's because it's, it's it's taking too long. It's um, okay. So so normally though, if this would have if this would have worked, it would have been right. much quicker. It would have connected like within a few seconds. Yes. So it's it's. Oh, this is terrible. So it didn't work, but hey, you know, it recovered. Uh, we'll try it again one more time. We got, I got to fill some time, right? Let's do it. Yeah, we got time. So, so um, let, let's let's kind of talk about what it, what would have happened next, just in case. So we can we can try running this one more time. Oh, that's just auto populated. Intruder alert. Okay. Or the number. Oh, the number is. Oh, maybe that's why. There you go. And then let's try this again. Um. I made a very special Wi-Fi network for the demo and I screwed it up. But and now it, we got it right. All right. Well, um, it was a fabulous demo. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what would have happened though? So it would have connected and then? It would have connected. It would have started getting the time values off the internet through the Wi-Fi module and then actually recording data, um, temperature and humidity from the, the environmental sensor. So we've done these, we've done this before. All right, Kirk. So don't worry. Oh, yeah. Um, no. oh, Something's happening? Nope. I reset it. So oh, okay. I'm gonna so, be that guy while you That's talk. all right. So what yeah, we'll go ahead, keep keep plugging away. We've done this before. There have been demos who that that have not gone through during a live demonstration. You're more than welcome to send us a redemption video. So if you'd like, you could send us a small redemption video and we can share it next week. So so feel free to shoot that over to, to Rachel and or myself. And um, if you want to share that clip, we can air it next week and, and show people this, this screen share actually working. Okay. All right. It's up to you. Um, otherwise, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, it's working now it's working. Okay, cool. There we go. So it's connected. And then basically I just need to enable the sensor data collection. Okay. What's happening is Ooh. it's getting time off the internet. It's collecting temperature data off the sensor and then it's posting it up on the web page. Um, oh, like, and I can, I can slow down the rate or increase the um, that's also the Bluetooth uh, capabilities of Artemis that then are working together with the Wi-Fi and the temperature sensor. Um, so now, the, oh, sorry, go ahead again. Oh no, I was just saying. So, so the Artemis, uh, the BOE was feeding the data to the uh, the Wi-Fi module. Oh no, to to the okay, and then yeah, the Wi-Fi effect. Okay, let's so Artemis bring it all together and then send it through Bluetooth to display on this uh, mm -hmm. Chrome. And now clearly the applications here become very great, right? Because you can take this data and actuate out, use IO outwards to adjust the temperature of say um, your heater or your air conditioner. So, you know, you're collecting the information and then say, oh, okay, well now we want to actuate something, right? Cause you still have access to all those IO. Absolutely. So, you know, this yeah. is kind of simple, but it's just shows how we can bring all these different technologies together um, and make something that's sort of useful. Um, and and you know we will continue to you know we're going to bring this this this, cap this property capability out probably in the next couple of months of spark fun and you can start building complex systems with wi-fi and bluetooth and all that um at sparkfun.com very nice very nice sparkfun.com cool this was a really cool demo actually kirk okay. thank you thank you very much yeah so i mean like we can can clearly something like this you can clearly see the applications like someone shows you the ability to sense then you just need to program in that secondary ability to react, right? And so um, that's very cool. All righty. Um, let me see what else I have on the docket here. 
Um, we were going to show you a cool demo. Maybe we can bring that one in next week with Sandeep, one of our very own from Arm. Um, but we're waiting for something uh, to to fall into place there. So we weren't able to show that. Uh, but we do have one more exciting announcement, right, Kirk? I think you're going to talk about something new here. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, we're always trying to figure out how to make it easier for people to develop different uh, systems, you know. And, mm -hmm. uh, Ken, you brought up that 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 uh, prototype and have all the yep. wires and stuff. And that's mm -hmm. exciting. I made some of the spark fun. Yeah. It's cool. We're like, how can we get rid of those wires? And just that's right. Yeah. Uh, you know. It's great to solder, but sometimes you're like, I don't want to bring out my solder, and I don't want to. No, I don't have a steady hand either. Yeah. Oh, okay. These <laughs> eyes. Um, uh, so, so we we did this micromod system last year, and I don't know. I have some stuff here. We took the microprocessor. This is a uh, oh, two and put it on an M.2 slot. Uh huh. So you can like, plug and play on different boards, and so here's like a board, and you can plug it. You know, you slot it in. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking to myself here. Slot it in and you, you screw it down, and then you can have, you know, an STM32 on your board, or you can be an Artemis, um, you know, Teensy, um, you know, NRF. You know, we have all these, you know, plug and play different um, MCUs on uh, different capabilities. We have machine learning and display. Um, so we have these fixed carrier boards, mm -hmm. and we were talking earlier, she was like, how can we? Make that dynamic too. So how can we make everything plug and play? You know, you know, if you're an old PC hacker, you know, you pull cards out and put the cards in. So we came up with this concept of expanding our micromod capability to something called function boards. Mm. We're putting the the actual functions, you know, besides the processor on a little board with an M2 M.2 connector. So they're kind of a little wider. This is a LoRa connection. Um, you know, is it in 3D, right? You know, so anyway, uh, <laughs> Um, but it's the M.2, and then, you know, we can plug in our processor, and I don't, and then you can also put in your function board, and then all of a sudden you have a LoRa and a STM32 system that you can go work on and work on the software, or you could pull this out, and I don't have it undone, but we did that for the dialog um, module too. So this is the dialog Wi-Fi function board, and then uh this is an environmental sensing function board and then we have a artemis system so this is a two, two system so here i can do environmental sensing um connect to wi-fi and then maybe do stuff with artemis but if you don't like artemis you can you can switch that out with an stm32 or one of the other processors and then you know we have different capabilities we have a uh, a board coming out that can talk over ethernet did I say that? I should have said that. Coming out soon. Uh, uh, <laughs> but you know, Wi-Fi, LoRa, um, what else do we do? Uh, it's cellular. But again, it's just so I can just plug and play, put things together quickly, uh, run all the wires, and just get to the software and start building my solution and my prototype. And again, you can also connect these two quick and talk to the 200 some sensor boards we have. Um, but no solder required. If you want to solder, you can go crazy on this, but uh, not, nothing required. And just get to the firmware because, you know, these days the firmware is so, you know, a lot of work has to go into that. Um, so these are the function boards that are available today. Uh, we launched last Friday. Um, we're excited about this. And it's, you know, our continued innovation of how to make prototyping and research and development easy at SparkFun. And, and along with these, we ship software and firmware and examples and all the stuff we normally do. Um, so you can just sit down, put stuff together, and rock and roll and come up with your solution. So we're excited about this. We're going to keep working on and growing this out next year, um, plus some other stuff uh, that I can't talk about, but good stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, if there's inputs or questions or vendors, let us know. Um, we, we, we love working with people and building boards like this. And, again, we worked with Dialog on this one, too. Um, you know, look at the designs. Um, and it was just a great experience. So hopefully, you know, go to the website. I saw the URL or the link go in. I take a look at it, um, and uh, you know, we're really interested over the next six months what people are doing with this stuff. And we'll continue to launch. We have a couple, three or four more boards in the queue right now, and nice. and uh, you know, we're excited about it. Um, and again, just you know, two minutes, a couple screws, all of a sudden you have a, an incredible dev board ready to rock and roll.
I, I love to see things like this, you know, so like you can look back here, right? These are all single board computers, but traditionally, you know, working in the, in the arm ecosystem, at least for a long time, you know, single board computers, you can't just like pop off the SOC and pop mm. on another SOC, right? You, you end up working. Once you start doing stuff like that, you start getting into the SOM market system on mm. module, right? right? But the system on module market is very fragmented. So it's yeah. not like there's a standard there where just like all these pinouts fit the same mm. thing and you have right. this baseboard or this baseboard or this multiplicity of baseboards that offer different functionalities with this SOC that plugs in and then this module that plugs in. So seeing that spark fun is kind of starting to address this. I think that's awesome. This modular approach, if spark fun manages, you know, the standardization around it, bringing in vendors and different SOCs, you can pop out this STM SOC, pop in a dialogue SOC, pop this out, pop in something else. And so next thing you know, you have this baseboard that can actually act as 20 different types of single board computers, rather than having this whole freaking board here full of, you know, 20 different uh, uh, single board computers, right? So. Absolutely. It's, we want to give the customer every good, good flexibility, um, but also eliminate, eliminate the hurdles to get things put together quickly. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's really cool. Ken, we'll keep innovating on that. Yeah. That's awesome. Ken, did you want to add anything uh, to this? No, I kind of. I'm just very. I think what what Sparkfun is doing like that, it definitely makes a whole prototyping and and a lot adds a flexibility in terms of what kind of configuration you can do. That that's that's really really great. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, then, yeah. Otherwise, you as you said, you be a bunch of SOM module around, and then, and then yeah, it's 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 just not manageable. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, once you get your design, once you figure yeah. out your, your composition there and you build out your product, go talk to SparkFun yeah. again, have them build your derivative design around those modules that exactly. you chose. Yeah. They can like customize it, reduce some of the components, cut yeah. costs, do all mm -hmm. sorts of cool stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, are you on our marketing budget? <laughs> <laughs> I did a lot of I did a lot of stuff like this when I worked for 96 boards. So you know, they, they started pushing out this SOM specification. Yeah. It's there, right? But like that's kind of the whole idea that the the SOC market when it comes to to when it comes to ARM, you know, you have all these different SOC vendors. They yeah. all kind of like do their own thing and they mm. have their own secret sauce and they don't want to they don't want to really release. So they have to kind of like keep their markets in, in, in their own verticals. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you have a company or a, a manufacturer and distributor that focuses on kind of uniting these vendors, I think that's what comes that that's where the ecosystem becomes stronger. Yeah. When you have someone like spark fund saying, I want to work with all these different SOC vendors and unite them under a standard to, to, to actually bring developers what they need. So I think that that's really cool. Um, and yeah, if anyone can do it, spark fund can, so that's cool. We're, we're trying and then, you know, hardware and software. So, you know, we're doing it all. So awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So with that being said, we are kind of approaching the end here. Um, what I like to offer our featured guests at the end of our episode is what we call the shameless plug. So, you know, some people like to plug their company. Some people will plug some charity that they like. Feel free to plug multiple things. Um, but yeah, I mean, send send people, send the viewers, send the viewers here live, and the viewers that are watching later on demand. Um, you know, some some place you'd like to plug. Okay. Go oh, I, you know, I, was, I was just gonna plug Spark Fun. Let's you know, do I, it. I, I Spark should, Fun. I gotta call Janelle and marketing. And business. <laughs> what, are we, what are we What are we shipping today? Um, you know, I, I would say you know, Spark Fun. You know, we're continuing to do what you saw today, bringing all these ecosystems and vendors together. Um, we have some exciting stuff in the pipeline. Um, you know, to the rest of the year, you'll see some stuff coming out. Um, a lot of it's we got some very interesting GNSS stuff coming out, and then next year, um, we will continue to expand these and quick. Um, uh, some interesting things on the firmware side, and uh, and just continue to innovate and get feedback from our customers and make it easy for people to be successful. Excellent, great plug. And as for me, I think. For today's uh, audience and all the community out there, if you ever think about wanting to do a Wi-Fi that's going to be powered by battery, look no further. Just come to Dialog. We have the lowest power out there. So yeah, so that's all you need to remember: lowest power consumption, which can keep last for more than a year or two. So yeah, look no further. 
That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we did share those links. Of course, everyone watching, you'll be able to find all the links and all the things that we discussed today in the description below. I want to just plug one more thing for you. If you're looking for Kirk on Twitter, you can find him right there, twitter.com forward slash code pod. And if you're looking for dialogue semiconductor, you can go find them at dialogue semi. Um, I don't think Ken has a Twitter yet. But maybe after this, he'll go make one. Yes. Uh, but you can still go check out that. And also, of course, at SparkFun, you can go find SparkFun as well on Twitter. So very cool. Um, you know, thank you so much, both of you, for your time. This has been amazing. Uh, everyone watching, thank you so much. Um, we're going to close this out now. Is that all right with both of you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent, excellent. All right. So everyone watching, thank you so much. We appreciate you being here. We are going to be here once again next week, Thursday, actually, I, I take that back. Next Thursday is Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes. You're going to bring the turkey? <laughs> That's the one day off a year that I get from this show, like the official one day off a year because we do everything. So, no, next year, there, next week, there will not be an episode. I hope you all, if you celebrate, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We will be back the following week with another episode, 5 p.m. UTC. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. We know it's valuable. You spent a whole, almost an entire hour here with us, so thank you so much. Kirk, Ken, Thank you. And if anything else happens and you want to come share it with us, feel free to drop us a line. We'll bring you back on the show. Oh, we will. Hey, thanks. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thanks, Smash man. that like button. Bye. Okay, bye.